Welcome to today's lesson. In this first tutorial, we will have a review tutorial reviewing how to find inverses graphically. So we are in the second half of section 7.4 and we're going to begin graphing logarithmic functions. Of course, we're going to have some fun, but I must have forgotten this part of my title. There we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> okay. Before we're going to graph logarithms, I'd like to explore and review some things that we already know about inverses. Firstly, algebraically, how do we find an inverse algebraically? That was pretty simple. What we did was we swapped the x's and the y's. The domain and range switch, so that's really all that we do. We swap the x and y and then either graph that if we're looking at ordered pairs or solve for the new y to find the um, inverse. So if we wanted to find the inverse of y equals x squared plus 3, this is one of the parabolas we've explored before, the first thing we would do is switch the x and the y, so y becomes x and x becomes y, so y equals x squared plus 3 turns into x equals y squared plus 3. And then we would have to solve this equation. We would subtract 3 from both sides. And we'd have the y squared is now equal to x minus 3. And then we would take square roots. And of course, when we take the square root, we don't forget that we have plus or minus, And in this case, the square root of x minus 3. So that is our inverse function. How do you find an inverse graphically? Well, what we would do is we'd create a t-table or a bunch of ordered pairs for our original, and then we would just swap the x's and the y's. So if I take my original y equals x squared plus 3 and plot or plug in you know, these five inputs, I'm just picking a 0, some positives, and some negatives, squaring negative 2 and then adding 3, of course, gives me 7, squaring a negative 1 and adding 3 gives me a 4, squaring a 0 and adding 3 gives me 3, Squaring a positive 1 is the same thing as squaring a negative 1 and adding 3, so I still get a 4. And same thing with the 2 squared is the same as negative 2 squared. Adding 3 gives me 7. So this is five ordered pairs for our parabola. And if I plotted them, let's start here at negative 2, 7. So negative 2 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And negative 1, 4 would be negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 0, 3 would give me right there. And 1, 4, and I start to see my symmetry. And there's 2, 7. So this is one of our parabolas. We've graphed that before, a nice function. One way to find the inverse of this function is to take the ordered pairs that we just found and swap them. Just like we did algebraically, we switched the x's and the y's, we could do that for the inverse. So 7, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 3, 0, 4, 1, and 7, positive 2. And now if I plot these points, I go out here to 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then oh, down negative 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1 is one of my order, other ordered pairs, 3, 0, 4, positive 1, and I start to see symmetry here. And here's our sideways parabola. That is the inverse. Now, of course, this parabola is not a function, but it still is the inverse. Remember, I dotted in this diagonal y is equal to x because inverses will always be symmetrical around that mirror, around that line. One more thing to note in this review tutorial is what happens with the domain and the range. If I wanted the domain and range for our original, that is our blue function, well, the domain is the set of all reals because I could have plugged anything I wanted for the value of x, and the range is, looks like we start at negative, excuse me, positive 3, and then we go up to positive infinity, so our range is, neg excuse me, positive 3, and I get to use a bracket because we get to include it all the way up to infinity. 
Now what happens for our inverse, when we switch the x's and the y's, the domain and range will switch. Now if we're looking at the inverse, which is the red function, the domain starts at positive 3. That's as far left as we go, and then it goes forever to the right to positive infinity. So my domain is positive 3 to infinity, again, bracket because I'm including the 3, and my range is everything because this arrow points all the way up and this arrow points all the way down, so my range is all reals. And you can see that for inverses, the domain and range will switch. The x's and the y's will switch. So this is just some review stuff about our inverses, and you can um, use this tutorial to help you if you need when we start talking about logarithms. Thanks for watching this. Bye-bye. <laughs>